Hello, hello everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Nice to see you all. Uh, I've traveled across the country in the past three days and last week I was also traveling across the country. Um, I've been a bit everywhere. I woke up at 6 a.m. and got a train from Manchester after getting in from London at about 11 last night. So I could be here. It's been a bit of a crazy time. So yeah, like I said before, the other guys have already done talks about, I was gonna do a talk on uh, how to get a job and like a guy, the guy from EA did a great talk on that. And then John was like, well, I wanna do a panel on going from student, being a student to being independent. I was like, shit, everyone's taken, taken all, all, my, all my subject matter already. It's gone it's to the winds. So this is a talk really about what our studio is like. And we're, we're a bit of a different studio to most people, but it's also the stuff that I've learned along the way. Um, so I hope it's relevant and I hope you like it. Um, so we're Radical Forge. We are based in this building here. We own all of this, this entire first floor of this building. We spend a lot of time skating around it as if it's a donut. Up here is another company called Sock Monkey. They own th that, they own that top floor as well. Um, Sock Monkey set it on fire. Oh, Sock Monkey set it on fire. Um, that were good. They didn't really. Uh, there, was a, there, was a, there was a junkyard nearby that sat on fire conveniently. Um, and it's just a great photo. I love it. It's really cool. I showed it to everyone. We, like, I, we, had, a, we had a pitch meeting with Miniclip the, uh, the other day. And I went and showed them. I was like, oh, yeah, so this is Radforge. The building's on fire. And they were like, what? <laughs> this was very good. Um, these are the games that we worked on um, that we can talk about. Uh, we do a lot of contract work that's white label that we're not allowed to say that we've done. Or we work with people that we can't say that we've worked on the thing because either it's not announced yet or we only did like a small bit of it and they don't want, our name will be in the credits, but not, not like as a studio, we can't be like, yeah, we did the thing. And that's the thing when if you start a small studio, that's what you do. But yeah, we did, we've done all of this. This was, this was uh, George Backer and Holly Pickering started this and Austin Wintory did the music. Um, and it was me, George and Holly in a room, a room back in 2014. Starting that with, there was a, a publishing company called Mastertronic where they had a whiteboard with all of the, the amount of money they had and every time I went, it went down. Like, it just went down and down and down and then Mastertronic folded, which is awful. But we moved, that IP got moved to Bossa and Bossa finally published it. That game took three and a half years to get out and make. It was crazy. It's been through some stuff. Gang Beasts, I spent three years of my life doing that. I did a lot of the environment art. So if any of you have played that, that's what I did. Um, Night Call, we did some shader work. Lazarus, we did all the background special effects and shader work on. Sublevel Zero, we did a lot of tech art stuff to get it running. And we, and we did the port to switch with Code Sync. And Shadow Point, we did a load of visual effects for Oculus Quest, which was a, how many, are any of you guys visual effects artists or tech artists? Okay, there's like no one in the room. It's like, it was well hard because the, the quest is like a potato running at like, it's, it was hard. It was a difficult task. So these are some of the companies that we work with uh, that we can say, there's one more that we can say we worked with that we haven't put up there, which is Double Eleven. Um, they've recently announced that they were doing Minecraft dungeons, which is cool. Um, so that's cool. So we're making a game called Brightport and the premise of this game is you play the cat of an evil supervillain that's just been murdered. All right, yeah, yeah. We make video games, it's pretty good. Um, so it was originally, a so it's a narrative puzzle game, and it was originally a game entirely based, um, entirely based for mobile platforms, but as time has gone on and we added more and more stuff to it because we had mad scope creep, and that's my fault. That's bad. Um, it's become a PC and Switch title as well, and we'll probably get it on Xbox if, 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 if one of us can get around to putting it on a dev kit. Um, but yeah, it doesn't go away you'd expect. Um, the game's very much the, the very game's very much about you start off and you find you find the guy who owns you dead and you're like what's happened and then you go somewhere else and a lot of crazy stuff happens that you don't expect like psychic powers happen and um, I'm gonna spoil the game. I'm gonna be quiet. So with this, the cool thing about about uh, like traveling the country all the time and meeting a lot of people is we get to do a lot of really awesome stuff. So we. Uh, we have a partnership with Warner Music because this guy down here, um, this guy down here is the uh, Warner Music head of con uh, content production for games. And what he does is basically get their bands to make music for games. But they started a year ago and we're the only studio, 
like we're the first studio that are doing this thing with them. So this recording studio is their recording studio, right? Um, and we were there, we were there finalizing the song for the game the other day with, with, the, with Hero and Will who did the music. Um, and we were, we were there finalizing the song for the game for the end credits because we all liked Mirror's Edge and we liked the fact that it has an end credits song. So we were like, we're gonna do that. And I said it to, this is Red, right? He's the other creative lead in the studio because there's eight of us. And um, I said to Red, I was like, as a joke, I was like, yeah, I really want to get a song at the end of the game. And he goes, not happening. It's just not happening. And I went, all right, fair enough. So, I'm, so I, I then go to, like, two days later, I then skateboard. Uh, I, sk I skate across Middlesbrough, because that's where the office is. And I skate into a meeting with a company called Wonder Films who do digital production stuff. Um, and as I, as, I, as I head over there, I'm sending screamo music to a guy called Callum Underwood, who's who runs Robot Teddy and they do a load of other stuff on Twitter. And this other guy, Rob, Rob, this guy, um, he, he sends me, he's sending the same kind of music as me, basically. So I'm like, oh man, we need to have a chat. And then I'm like, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I've run this content production stuff for Warner. This is what we do and I want interest in. That's how, we need that for this. And that's how this happened. Um, and because of that, we've got a song that's being released through them for the soundtrack of the game as well, which is a little bit mental. We didn't pay for any of it either. That's madness. That's absolute madness. That's the same recording studio that like Roadrunner Records and Atlantic use. So if you know any like their bands or anything like that, that's, the, that's, the, that's that room where a load of like number one hits or metal music that you probably listen to like is. is. So we, as a studio, also made a tool called Blockout. Uh, designers, there was loads of artists, right? But how many of you are designers that are left? All right, cool. Well, this tool's free and it's Unity based, but there is an Unreal version that we haven't pushed to the store yet because we're lazy and we'll get on it at Christmas when we actually have time to do the work. But the Unreal version of this um, is the exact same. It's basically just a load of assets for you to just build stuff however you want to build it. Um, it's, and everything's gridded and to to a, a specific style, so your artists can then take it and make the thing look nice without having to stress out, if that makes sense. Um, so we built that, it's completely free. We did that just because making level design, level design stuff for Gang Beast taught me a lot about how not to make things and how to streamline the process. So we did this and we built, that's why we did that. Um, it's free. Uh, we did some contract work for a company called Spilt Milk. And we've done a lot of stuff with them, but this is a game called Waterways. Artists, how many? How long do you think this took to make? Six months. Six months. That's like three weeks' work. Yeah, so that's three weeks' work. The speed at which we work at is like, is like pretty. It's pretty intense, right? Like it's not. We're not. We're not the sort of studio that waits around. We use a load of procedural methods to make everything. So all of these buildings and all this stuff is all just crazy shader stuff. Um, like we don't like none of those buildings are unwrapped. Like waste of time. Just we uh, we just uh, we just slapped on uh, triplanar textures and did a load of other sort of tricks like that to get the look that we needed. Um, because for us it was a proof of art concept more than it was final art. Um, also. Try playing on textures when you're making buildings, rocks, or anything like that are absolutely the way to go. They'll save you so much time and so lit, so that you can do so much stuff with them. So yeah, we did that, and that took us, it took us about three weeks. And that was one artist, and I did about a week of tech art stuff on it because I was running around and doing what John said earlier with spreadsheets. I run a networking event called GameBridge in the Northeast. How many of you guys have heard of that? Probably none of you. Just one. Excellent. Um, so GameBridge is effectively a place where students and people meet up. It's not just students. Uh, the industry of the Northeast meets up in Middlesbrough and we get about 280 people come to it and we get like Apple are coming, the next one's on the 5th of December and Apple are coming up and a lot of other people so it's a bit like, it's a, it's, it's a big deal for, it, for the area. So if you ever want to drive all the way up to sunny Middlesbrough, um, it's, that, that exists. Um, how many of you guys go to games conventions? You see this, don't you? All right, are you ready for the side that me and John see? Yeah, yeah, business. This guy here has, his, has no tie on, so you know he's creative. 
That's how it works, right? He knows what's going on. Um, yeah, so when I first joined the I started traveling to conferences, this is what I saw all the time. And I was like, whoa, no way. Video games are amazing. This is ace. And then as I started to run a business, all of the stuff that actually happens that gets people jobs and gets things done happens in rooms like this with Lord Creative over here being like, that's business. And I'm like, I guess, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's a bit of an interesting side that I don't think students or people ever really get to talk about. No one talks about it. Like John said earlier that the games industry is booming and no one wants to tell you that because it, it'll diminish how valuable you are as people. And the truth is, that is that's exactly how it is. Like, Rad Forge as a studio, we value people quite, quite highly. Like, I'm, my staff don't work like eight hour days, they work seven hour days most of the time, and they do whatever they, do whatever they want whenever they want. If they, do, if they wanted to leave or they wanted a day off, I'm like, yep, yeah, cool. Because I care about them as people more than I care about them as assets to do work. And that's, that's why we get the work done that we get done, because they're like, I've got this amount of time and then I've got to go to Scotland for the weekend. Like, our concept artist right now is driving up to Scotland because he wanted to go to Fort William. And I quote, for some reference, he said. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, man, sure. Um, so some of the stuff that I learned along the way. Um, great things start from like the smallest thing. So like, if it's the smallest idea of you seeing some luggage float across uh, like maybe seven meters down a, down a road in London and you go and you think to yourself, there's a game in that, about two, two pieces of luggage that have been spread apart and they've got to meet, and you've got to find a way to do it. Like, when, when, that's a game that Red wants to make. I do not want to make it, but Red does. And I'm sure one day we'll end up making it. But like, the studio started out um, in a small room like this. Um, this is Red, this is Monty, I'll talk about those guys later. But it was me and, me and a guy called Freddy, um, who is here? This is Freddy. There's Freddy. So it was me and a guy called Freddy who set up, and we set up in a room that was probably this corner to that light there, big. And there was just two of us. And what we did was we were really lucky because this wall here that you can see, if you can actually see this wall, yeah. This is a, these are the signatures of everybody from the games industry that came to visit us in the year and a half we were in that office. And we're talking like game directors from Life is Strange, the Halo Wars 2 director, the director for Alien Isolation, um, like guys from, guys from literally every part of like video games just came to visit us because, and I quote, we are fun. That's what they all say. Being in our office is fun. It's not for me, but apparently for everyone else it is. So we're, um, so we get, we, we had a lot of people come to that. This is the, the wall of madness that is cat game. That's what we call it. The actual name of it is Brightpool. But this is the, the wall when we were iterating on it. And if you, if you have a look, you can see like small design features that we had. This was every level. Um, this was back in July, uh, not last year, but the year before. Um, we had every level up on a wall and everything that we were trying to figure out for the narrative of the game. Because making video games and making anything is a fluid process. And if anyone ever tells you, they're like, I'm making this thing, this is exactly what it's going to be from start to end. They're wrong. They're full of shit. That's not how it works. <laughs> right? Especially if you want to make something, something good. You've got to iterate and you've got to work it out. So what we did was we'd take everybody through this wall and I'd get, <laughs> people would come visit us and I would get Red to stand up and be like, take them through the entire narrative of the game. And then it would get to like, about, oh, it'd get to about here, right, this point, and then Red, the, you see them tailing off on the narrative, and then Red will be like, and here's the big spoiler, and then they'd get peak interest, and then they'd get to about here, and it'd, it'd, it'd drop again, and then, and, then, and then we'd be like, here's the next spoiler, and so on. Um, but as we went through all of this, as we were going through it as a studio, people came and we told them our idea, our ideas for the narrative, and they would tell us exactly what they thought, and we were written, being able to iterate and change it made the game narrative better. Like the game narrative for, narrative for Brightpoor is, is probably the best thing about the game. And I think the game is beautiful to look at. But the narrative is like, we, re recent, we recorded all the VO in Newcastle um, last, uh, on Thursday, Friday and Saturday of last week. And um, have you, have you guys ever heard of a place called Biker? 
our old biker is like the roughest part of Newcastle. And there's an abandoned church. And in this abandoned church, there's a, there's a, a VO recording studio that none of the residents know about. But I was stood outside this abandoned church going, this can't be. This is, uh, this is sketchy. I was stood there with like, my laptop, my iPad, all of that shit. And I'm like, hmm. And the, the, like, the taxi driver dropped me off and was, I was like, where are you going? I was like, yeah, to the recording studio and biker. And he's like, there isn't a recording studio and biker. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Very funny. It was craziness. Um, so this is like the, our, old, our, our, our new office and kind of the traveling stuff that we get up to. Um, we've actually moved office again now because we now have the entire floor, basically. It's all ours. Bar one, well, one company, but they're, they're lovely people and they, we just let them walk around and they let us walk around. They use all our game stuff at lunch because they, they don't have their own. So they just go and play Smash Bros or something. It's weird. But yeah, so we have, um, we, 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 we moved here. Um, this is a guy called Joe who works at Sock Monkey. And uh, this, was, this was our designer Josh's first day. And on his first day when he came in, for the, for the you know how I talked about uh, how we hire people and we get people in and then we like have a load of stuff happens and it's a bit mental. So on this day, Joe came in and started making up songs, right? Um, his boss came in who, and uh, Bob's his boss and Bob has a pug. And the, this pug started running around and scared the crap out of Freddie, our technical director, and he banged his head. And Red had to take him, like, we had to take him to some A&E thing, so, which, was, which was hilarious. And whilst all that was going on, Monty was skateboarding next to him while we were mid, like, having a conversation. It was, it was, it was the most mental day in the office for a while. Um, it was good. But one of the things that's important about us is we celebrate games culture. Um, we celebrate the creation of games culture. We don't just celebrate games so, or, or, or films. We celebrate how they're made. So we have a huge library of art books. Um, it's probably triple that now. Um, because every month when we get art books in, or we get any form of money, and I'm like, 200 quid on art books, sick. And then the, the, I never get to read them. Like, I, I'm, because I'm never in the office. Um, for the team, the, we just got the Dead Cells one, Heart of Dead Cells, which I'm quite excited about reading. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to take that. But a lot of these are signed as well. Um, so like the, Tomb Ra the Tomb Raider's Catalyst one signed, and the Art of Remembering is signed. Um, so yeah, look after the people that work for you, right? So if you start in a studio, you're doing anything, or you, like, you have intrinsic value as a person, but also if you're not looked after by the company you work for, why are you even there? Like, what's, the, what's the point in being there? Because you, you could be anywhere else that would make you happier. And if, if this company isn't doing the best to make you happy within like, their capable bounds, especially when they, they've got the capacity to do it, they don't value you as people. <laughs> That's how it works, just how it is. So, speaking of people, these are my, these are my boys, Red and, Red and Monty. He's, he's our designer, this is Monty. Um, this is the first time Red went to London. Little fact, do you know where this is? This is St. Paul's Cathedral and he crashed a wedding. <laughs> he did, and I was like, why have you done that? Why? <laughs> But he didn't know what was going on. It basically, he was just looking around going, this building's lovely, taking fo reference photos. And then the wedding bells started ringing and he sent me that photo. <laughs> and I was like, what? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing. There's Monty explaining the narrative of the game to us uh, when he didn't know what the narrative of the game was, which was a glorious moment. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. This is our guy, uh, this is our guy called Alex. So. It's not what you think. It's just a badly timed picture, but it's amazing. So, so Alex looks a little like Jesus, and what he, he's, he's been a long time friend for years, and he, he made games in the mod scene back in the day. But now he travels up mountains for a living, um, and, he, and he, he takes people on expeditions and all sorts of stuff. Um, and he comes and works out of it, and he, does, he runs a YouTube channel and works out of our office for it now. But he's effectively the guy that's like, yeah, I've got all these crazy photos of glowing things, and I'm like, oh, do you now? And all of that stuff's like, like it absolutely feeds. We call him the Radical Forge real world environment researcher, if that makes sense, um, because he goes out and does stuff. This is just a very poorly timed photo, but it's damn hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. He doesn't even know how to shoot him. He doesn't, it's like, he doesn't even know how to shoot a gun. He was telling me, he was just holding it. There's a photo as well of him at the top of a mountain and an entire Romanian squad of like, of like the military squad up there as well. 
Yeah, it's also, so me and Alex have done a lot of extreme sports stuff together. And he's got a photo of him completely naked on the top of a mountain, like facing, like uh, with just his back showing to the camera. And minutes after he took that photo, the Red Bull helicopter flew over him. <laughs> And the, and the pilot of the Red Bull helicopter messaged me being like, yo, Alex is naked on the top of a mountain again. And I was like, again? Again? What? It was, it was amazing. Um, so yeah, being a fun person is really important and making sure that, sure that the company is about people more than it is about what you do and who you are if you run a company. It's one of the things that I learned. It's about, for us, it's about Everyone in the studio has a great time and knows what they do. So here is a collection of people. This is the lead designer and owner of Spill Milk. Amazing man. Knows everything there is to know about any form of video game design culture. He's like, yeah, so these people worked on this game? And I'm like, good. Thank you for that. And then I'll go over and be like, yeah, so I heard you worked on this game? I've known this all along. This is the way, the way it seems. But he's, he's amazing. He's like a, a walking encyclopedia of just pure knowledge. Uh, this is Des, he did Life is Strange and uh, a load of other stuff for Square Enix. Um, this is Kieran, he's lead outsource artist at Sony Soho. Uh, but me and him went to uni together and we grew up uh, throughout the games industry together traveling. Um, and he's honestly saved my life so many times. If I, if I ever need a place to crash in London, which is every month, he's like, yeah man, just come on down. I basically have a key to his flat. So like, cause, uh, and so we don't have to, and in the early days of Radforge when we didn't have a lot of money and we, all the money that we had was bootstrapped and we were trying to like get contract work in, that saved my life, like forever. Also this is Oddish, if you didn't know. That's Oddish, big boy, um, it's cool. So yeah, it's all about people and who you know, right? So like, we're, these are just photos from the, the people. This guy runs CodeSync, have you guys heard of that, heard of that studio? No, uh, this, guy, this guy here is a um, designer at Just Add Water, but he's probably one of the best games designers under 30 I've ever met. He's, he's, he's the guy that's watched every GDC talk on theory and read all of the design theory books and will be like, yeah, on page 27 it says we should do this. And I'm like, bloody hell, <laughs> it does. <laughs> he's amazing. Um, honestly, he's amazing. That's Neil Palmer wearing my hoodie and that's a doggo. His doggo's lovely. Um, so really, really important because when I was a student, I expected to be told or given a lot of things. And I learned very quickly that people don't hand things out to you. People won't be like, hey, you deserve an opportunity for this thing, even if you think you do, because you might deserve an opportunity for a thing, right? But if you, if you can't prove to the person that has the opportunity that, or that can give you the opportunity that you deserve that opportunity to do the thing, you, they won't give it you. Does that make sense? So people will... People won't hand you things. They won't just be like, hey, you're really good at sound. You should totally come and work here. Or here's an opportunity for, here's a contract for a quarter of a million to make a game. That, that doesn't get handed to you, right? You have to work for those things. Um, and you have to put a lot of time, effort, and energy and focus on finding that thing. Um, it's actually harder to, to do than most people would think. So just keep that in mind throughout all of, when you're applying for jobs or starting a thing. Um, this is just from, this is literally just photos of Stitch. Um, but my, my team basically say that I'm like Stitch. So this, these are all photos that were taken yesterday and the day before um, that I put in. This is from the trip, the trip down in London, uh, which is pretty cool. This is Warner Music's, Warner Music's like bar area with all of their gold records. It's insane, absolutely insane. Um, but yeah, I put this in to be like, you need, to, you need to travel a lot if you run a studio and you need to meet a lot of people. And that part of being given opportunities is also about being in the right place at the right time. So you have to be everywhere and target your opportunities properly. Um, and this is an example of that. Um, as, as with stitches everywhere, it's very funny. Um, here's another thing that's really important, especially nowadays, it's a lot easier than it was, but nowadays you can tell people exactly how you feel about a thing. So if, you're, so if our guys are like, hey, I don't like this game idea, or I'm really angry with Red because he's, his hair is too long and his hair gets everywhere in the office, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? But like, don't be afraid to tell people how you feel about the, the anything that's going on. We have a policy at Radforge where you can talk about anything, and it's important because 
it's sort of like for us, it's about making sure that everyone's mentally healthy as well as physically healthy. Um, so don't ever be afraid to tell people how you feel. Um, manage your expectations of everything you do. So manage all of the things that, that you want to do as a studio and where you want to go, whether it's contract work or own IP work. Radforge is lucky we split our time between contract work and own IP work. Um, but at the minute, we're, he we're heavily on con the contract work side because our own IP work is at a stage where we're, we're just, we've got to tweak, tweak bits here and there, and we had to get the VO recorded and some other stuff. So like, what, w while we, were, we knew that was coming in, we'd ramp up and ramp down for that. Um, let the best person do the job. This is, a, this is a thing that a lot of studios, especially bigger studios, don't do. They'll happily let somebody that's... If, say, for example, how many of you guys know Houdini? A few of you, right? So if you know Houdini and you go into it to do any visual effects stuff in any studio, um, there'll be somebody that doesn't know Houdini telling you how to use it. <laughs> That's just how it is. I, like, we get it quite a lot. Um, and it stifles creativity of fixing the problem or doing the thing that you want to do. So um, let the best person do the job. Um, keeping the studio alive is the hardest thing about running a game studio. It's, it's been really difficult to keep everything, everything alive. Um, and make sure your team are enjoying and loving life. Uh, we all skate. That's one of the things that we do. Um, here's everyone having a great time with some industry legends. And thanks for listening. We do have jobs, so feel free to email me. And I'll, uh, if you have, we're looking for anything that isn't QA, production, art, design, anything that isn't QA. Um, thanks for listening. I hope my babble wasn't insane.